Welcome back to the channel. Behind me you can see this welding cart that I recently posted a video on the assembly. And here you can see behind me we have the welder that's going to go on that cart. It is the Everlast Power MTS 250 Si. We're going to go ahead and open the box, see what's in there, and see how it fits on the cart. Alright, so just opening the top here, uh, looks like got a little bit of, I wouldn't call it damage, but the prong has been on here. This is a little banged up. We'll see what we got. So one reason I got this cart is because of the storage that we have. So I think as I start pulling stuff out of here, I'll probably go ahead and get it put away. And this might be the TIG kit. That's one thing I liked about this over some of the other ones I looked at. It actually came with the, the TIG kit. Uh, some of them you had to buy additional parts in order to do TIG, but this came with it. And this is the box that the regulator for the gas comes in. Hopefully it's an okay shape. Well, it looks like it's all there. Here, here's some consumables, which this top drawer has some compartments in it to make uh, storing these consumables nice. But we'll get to all that later. Here's the TIG torch. You got the ground clamp, which I will leave this out. Also, we've got the MIG. Here we've got the arc handle. And here we've got the 240 to 120 adapter. I do plan to wire this 240, so file that away. And I believe this is the hardware to put the handle on the welder. This looks like the right time to put the handle on. All right, this is the fun part. I'm gonna lift this up out of here and set it on the cart. This has a little bigger footprint than I had anticipated. I was actually trying to get the 211 SI. Uh, they were out of stock, so I had to upgrade. So uh, this one's gonna have to sit sideways, which is fine. It'll give me better access to the spool. We'll take a look around. I'm gonna familiarize myself with the uh, instructions and I'll come back. The first cable we're going to attach is the MIG cable. Here's a protective cover. It looks like we're going to have uh, the gas is going to come through here. So it's kind of cool. All your connections are here, including gas. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. You can see we're going to line this up with this bigger hole here. All right, that cable is done. Now we have the ground cable, and because we are going to do standard MIG with gas, it says to put this ground cable to the negative. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and power it up with the 120 just to see how it sounds. All you have to do for the switch from 240 to 120 is use this adapter and then plug this into the wall. All right, at this point we are plugged in. It appears this breaker is in the off position. Okay, 
Well, our fans got damaged and or the fans didn't get damaged, but the fan shrouds got damaged in shipping. So I'm gonna pop those off and I'll probably just flip them around. Let's go see what the panel looks like. So this is just the initial unboxing on this. So I really, I haven't messed with anything. I don't really know what all we have going here. So we're gonna go ahead and continue the setup on this welder. And you can see we've got the regulator, the gas line, and I have a cylinder here. So I'm gonna just, hook this up and I'll explain a little bit as I go and this regulator kind of caught me off guard this is a different style than what I'm used to seeing I don't weld a whole lot I do weld at work but um, the welder we have at work has two gauges on it where this has the gauge that tells you basically the pressure in the tank and then this is the outlet pressure and so we'll go through setup when when I get this actually put on. First thing we need to do is get the top off the tank. One thing we need to do is purge this opening just in case there's any debris in here. So that's just a little spurt like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the regulator. We don't need any Teflon tape here. It's a brass fitting and it's tapered to fit in this valve here. So now we just need to put the line on. And this line has a female end and a male end. The male end goes to the welder. Again here we don't need a Teflon tape for the brass fitting. We'll make the connection here. With the extra hose, I'm just gonna let it loop around the tank. And now, out of curiosity, I'm gonna open the valve on the tank. You wanna open this all the way. There's a double seal in the valve, so I heard. I think you have to test it while, while it's hooked up. All right, so we're gonna move from this to putting a wire in to the cabinet. All right, one of the accessories that this came with was this right here, and I didn't know what it was, but I do now. This welder is made for a 12 inch spool, and we have an option to do an eight inch spool, and that's what this is for, it's an adapter. And you can see this little tang on here. Mates up there. And then the 8 inch spool should go on here and then line up with that right there. So I'm going to grab the 8 inch spool that I bought and see how it fits. I guess by now you've come to realize that this did not come with any welding wire. So I had to go buy some. Bought some from Rural King. I know Hobart's a good brand so I went ahead and picked that up. I'm gonna also get this plugged in so that we can feed the wire. 
you can see here that the wire comes in off the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and set this on the spool. Lining up this hole here. I'm going to do some checking here and make sure I've got the right roller for the wire that I'm using. So I'm going to take a second to figure that out. We're going to be using 35 thousandths wire. So we need to turn these to around. I'll show you that when I get them removed. I'll show you that if I get them removed. So here you can see there's two grooves on them. We got a bigger groove on the bottom, smaller groove on top. And according to the book, I think it was 30 and 35 thousandths will run on the bigger ring and 23 through 25 runs on this top one. So I'm turning it around this way here. You can see there's a keyway. And the key is right here. So that Got the ring turned around. Lined up. Need to change this one as well. Now we can go ahead and feed the wire. I'm gonna plug it in so that when I'm ready, I can just pull the trigger and get it to come through. All right, I got me a pair of these fancy welding pliers. I'll leave a link in the description below if you need some of these. So I think we are ready. I've got power. I haven't turned it on yet, but we're gonna go ahead and get this wire Started. All right, so now that we got the wire in there, we want to put the tensioner down. Now we can run the machine and get the wire out this end here. That was the speed.
See him pulling the trigger. There we go. So now we can put the tip back on. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the machine off. So these tips, I'm not sure if you can see the marking on here. It's 1.2. That's kind of hard to see. So I'm gonna do something to make these a little more visible. So basically just took a sharpie, sharpie it all over that number, then we've got some acetone, a rag, got some acetone, now I'm just going to wipe over this number and hopefully, yeah. We can see that a lot better. So I'm gonna do that to the other three. And on this one, since we're using a 35 thou wire, we're using the 0.9 millimeter tip. Uh, we need to set up the gas now. Turn the valve all the way on. Turn the welder on. So as I pull the trigger, you can see it rise up to about 20 CFM. I'm gonna leave it there for now. Uh, on MIG, I've read you need to be between 15 and 30. I think 20 is a good good spot. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there. I am going to go ahead and shut the gas off. And now we're going to try and set the tension. You can see here I've got the tension set at about 3. And I'm just gonna give it the wood block test and hopefully it'll pass. Best I can tell, we're in good enough shape to start welding. Now that we have gas, wire, and the tension set on the wire, we're ready to start welding. Unfortunately, at this moment, I don't have any PPE. I need to get a helmet, uh, some gloves, and a jacket. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And just remember, I'm not an expert. If I did anything wrong, setting this up put it in the comments below as well that way i can learn other people can learn but i did just want to show the unboxing and the setup so i appreciate you taking the time to watch